I want to be a part of it. New York, New York, yes, sir. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Player Display for a brand new review of a brand new line we have not reviewed on this channel yet. I thought we'd go to one of my favorite figures of all time, no joke. And this, of course, is Brain from the NECA line of Gremlins figures, which has a very odd history. I think it began in 2011 or 2012 when I was around 12 years old or so. And of course, being a kid with basically no wallet to speak of, and also being a major fan of Gremlins since I literally watched the first movie three times a day, no joke, I really wanted to get every Gremlins figure I could ever find. And I think I walked out of that comic store one day with, I believe, uh, the Gremlin version of George, along with his Mogwai version, and then the Mogwai version of Mohawk. And then I think a few years after that, maybe 2014, 2015, I got the Bat Gremlin, which I wish I had to display with him since they're kind of two figures that need to be displayed next to each other, but oh well, perhaps another time. And then after that, it kind of went quiet. Then we got a gaming console version of Gremlin Mohawk, which was strange because they didn't actually release a normal standard skin-coated version of Mohawk before that. I know they did that really giant spider version that I never actually saw um, in person before. It's just very strange the release order of all these figures, and more interestingly, how they released figures for Gremlins 2 long before they released figures for Gremlins 1. The release order of these figures, there's basically no rhyme or reason, which I guess is fitting to the Gremlins, a very mischievous and hectic little species that we get in two fine and disastrous movies, which I absolutely adore. And Brain might be my favorite, perhaps second to Stripe, but I'd have to think about that. That's a very tough call. But yeah, let's go ahead and look at this figure. It is a perfect marriage between soft goods, paintwork, sculpting. I love everything about this guy. And what things do I love about this guy? Well, let's get into it and start with the head sculpt. Let me go ahead and remove his pipe, one of his first of a good amount of accessories. This is an ultimate release. I don't know what NECA means by an ultimate figure anymore because they basically plaster that title on every figure they release these days. So there's no longer such thing as a NECA regular figure. They're always ultimate. And I suppose that just helps them to sell better. They always come with a good amount of accessories. So I don't know what the gambit is there. Regardless, this is ultimate brain and I would take him no other way. I love and adore this figure with all my heart. So let's have a look at his face a little bit deeper. The camera's picking up very well. Very organic, very glossy details that we got on the gremlins that we saw in the second installment of the franchise. The glasses are very unique to this figure as he is the only gremlin to ever wear glasses and talk very fluently, let alone have a British accent for some reason. For those of you who haven't seen the movie, basically there's a scene where a whole bunch of gremlins effectively ransack a, a laboratory that's in a hotel that's also a mall for some reason. The movie was absolutely bonkers and Brain absolutely embodied everything that movie was about. Going back to the glasses, they're a little bit on the cloudy side. I wish they were a little bit more clear because I remember vividly when we first saw him, his eyes were kind of being magnified through the lenses, so it would have been nice if we had that effect. Although I think I have seen other figures of Brain where the lenses were a little bit more clear, so if you go out to get yourself one, then you might have better luck. But I'm still happy I came to terms with the cloudiness of these lenses, and they don't bog me down. Going down to the mouth, you can make out some really nice gums and teeth, and then the spikes around the the jawline, that transition over the brow, and it's just a really good sculpt. I really like it. I guess I could go ahead and complain that there's not an articulated jaw on this guy, because he's brain, he's a He's known as the gremlin that talks, so that's kind of unfortunate. But with all the accessories they get, especially since one of them needs to be held in his mouth pretty securely, I think it's kind of justified. And going to the back, they do not give up on really good paintwork. They, they took no prisoners when they got every detail down. Even though you never saw the back of a gremlin's head necessarily, but you can see the very nice asymmetrical paint details kind of transitioning into an also very well applied paint sculpt. That's a little bit off center, but it's a gremlin. It's something that was birthed off of one of the main four gremlins back. So I guess that's acceptable if they look a little bit off here and there when it comes to the colors and the patterns. They're organic beings. 
And then going down, actually there's not too much more we need to look at this figure because everything else is draped in very beautiful clothes. I almost want this guy to be my new therapist. But yeah, there's a lot of layers going on here. Um, insert Shrek meme here. But we've got a really nice overcoat which matches with the pants that are very well textured and are of a very nice high quality cloth. I don't feel like it's flaking or stringing off or anything like that. It's a very nice and tough, high quality cloth. And then underneath we also have a blue undershirt. I don't know how far that goes. I think it ends at the shoulders right there. So that way it doesn't, um, I guess, puff up the sleeves that we've got going on over here. And then down here you also have a little button which actually is Velcro. So you can kind of pin this wherever you like in order to get it shaped over the shoulders as you prefer. There is a little Velcro patch right there, but you can actually put this wherever you want. Like you could put it up there more or less. I kind of put it Oh, there it is. It's kind of hiding in there. So it's technically supposed to go there, but then it definitely looks a little too wide, at least for me. Um, it gives a little bit of a puppet feeling, which would kind of match for a gremlin. But for me, I like to put it past that Velcro pouch, so that way it kind of uh, form fits the figure a little bit more nicely. On the back of the clothing, uh, it continues with a nice jacket pattern, and it's very well textured. And there is only one single noticeable flaw I have with this figure, which is not even a big deal. But whenever you have Gremlins 2 Gremlins, it's part of their aesthetic that they have little um, elbow horns, I suppose. And you get one here, which is kind of popping out of the sleeve. When I opened the figure, it was not like that. But once you start articulating him, eventually that's going to kind of pop out. And I think, um, no, the same didn't happen for this side. So that's something you want to be wary of. But at the same time, it's kind of a happy accident for this figure. This is the first um, gremlin that we see put on a full suit of clothing, aside from the flasher gremlin, and I guess in that case he didn't wear his clothes for very long. So it makes sense that they're running around the mall, grabbing clothes that aren't meant to fit them, and then they have their these protrusions that are poking out of clothing. So I'm actually okay with the fact that it pops out of the elbow. And even if you don't like that, it's hidden in the back anyway, so you're never going to see it regardless. And down here, you kind of have what I suppose is a tail popping out of the pants. Um, it kind of amuses me that perhaps this particular gremlin went through the effort of cutting a slit in the back of the pants just to accommodate for his species, but he's a pretty clever guy, so I wouldn't put that past him. Down on the feet, pretty much all of Gremlins 2 Gremlins have the exact same feet, uh, very wide out, three digits, and it allows them to stand a lot better than the Gremlins from Gremlins 1, where the feet are much smaller. I also neglected to mention that I have a NECA um, licensed figure stand, which work extremely well for a lot of figures, but particularly for these Gremlins, because they usually don't like to stand up too well. Like, even for this guy, he stands pretty well on his own, but after, like, seven days, all of a sudden, bonk, he just falls right over. As you'd expect, his hands also get the same attention that the face and the feet get, with really nice paint details and sculpt work all around. Very nice claws, very well shaped, no warping to speak of, at least on this pair of hands. And same with the other one that we will get into as we transition into accessories. So, let's have a look. So, of course, first we have the two open hands over here, which hinge in and out, as do these gripping hands right here. It's worth mentioning that depending on what accessories you use, the fingers might flex out a little bit, which might be worth the sacrifice for what we're about to look at. And the one accessory they might want to be a little concerned with, although I suppose there's a reason to be concerned with all three of them, aside from the hands, is this brain flask, which is, of course, what he drinks, uh, leading to him having a crazy silhouetted seizure and a shadow, and then he becomes the brain we know and love, kind of just have this green goo, which I wish was maybe a little more translucent looking inside the flask. But ultimately, if you're ever going to be displaying it or having him holding it, then you probably want this printed side where you have... Uh, the very blatant <laughs> uh, brain image right there. And then you've got a little bit of cursive there. I think it says brain hormone. That seems about right. And then you've got some science-y letters over there that I will never be able to understand. So as I was talking about when it comes to the malleability of the hands, um, when you first get them, they are pretty much the same. They're gripped just as tightly. So what I think would be best is you choose a hand to designate as your flask holding hand because it is going to stretch out the digits quite a bit. But once you get it in there, he holds it very well. 
And then also, if we test it in here on the wide hands, um, it's too loose. It's just going to slide right out. So you are going to need to choose one of the clamped hands in order to have him to hold the flask, which is pretty easy to do. Let's go ahead and do a hand swap right here. So just hold the arm right there. Give it a little twist and a pull. There goes the figure stand. Then we can take our gripping hand, and then you, again, twist and push. Then you've got your new hand. The hand's actually poured on very well. It's a nice and thick peg, so you, I never feel like I'm going to wind up breaking it or anything like that. Then you can put the flask back in, just like so, and he looks pretty damn good. As for his second accessory, which I removed at the beginning of this review, we have his pipe, which I wish um, may, perhaps maybe had a little smoke effect coming out of it, but not a big deal. Not a whole ton to look at, but it is definitely the cherry on top when it comes to this particular figure, and he has the kind of that uh, psychologist look going on about him. And there are multiple ways that you can use this, actually. The first thing you can do is take your second claw hand, which is a little bit more on the clamped side with the digits, at least on mine, and then what you can do is kind of have the pipe perched in there a little bit. You can kind of find a sweet spot, and then he will hold it between his two fingers. So he can look like when he's having that interview, he's kind of bringing it back, bringing it back in for a puff, and then pulling it back out. So that's really a really nice option. But additionally, if you want his hands to be doing a little bit more, but you still want to use the pipe, you could just slot it right into his face. So just push right into the teeth, like so, and it holds in really well. Um, the pipe shaft kind of expands as you push it down further, and then eventually it hits a nice sweet spot where there's a good amount of friction holding it in. It's not going to fall out. Ah, genetic sunblock is our third accessory. And this is the reason why I lament not having the bat gremlin here for this review. This is, of course, the serum that he ejects into the bat gremlin's neck. When you look really closely, even though it's a tiny accessory, they paid very good attention to detail, as pretty much is a trend for NECA in general. On this side, you have um, another very blatant No Sun logo, clearly. Huh, reminds me of a very familiar logo that we've come accustomed to on this channel. Hmm, interesting. And then down here, you have um, not really the needle point, but you have sort of uh, the end of the actual syringe itself that the needle would be pushed out of, I suppose. It would be very hard to get a piece of plastic that's that thin, and even if you did, it would probably just break right off, so I'm okay with it not being there. And in order to apply this genetic sunblock, you can take this gripping hand here where the digits are a little bit more wide apart. Again, I don't remember how these fingers looked exactly when I first got it, so they may or may not be more warped or more stretched out when you get yours. But as for mine, it does an absolutely great job just slotting in two fingers through these two holes within the syringe. And he holds it great. Just keep it at a good angle and holds in there. If you tap it, then it's going to fall back, but push it back a little bit and it's pretty tight. I think I remember when I first got this figure, I kind of had to condition the hand where I put the syringe in, I pulled it back out, I put it back in again, uh, rinse and repeat. So that way it would be his definitive flask or syringe holding hand. So it gives you a little bit of creative license depending on what you want him to be holding. And that's not to say that this other hand is useless. It's just apparently I like it when my uh, gremlins have that right hand available. Um, this is to... Uh, the guy editing this video in the future cut out that whole other portion because I realized I held up the wrong hand. No, I'm not gonna do that. Except for mistakes, you nerd. Not to say that this other hand is totally useless. I just apparently like my figures to be righties for whatever reason, but this is also a very good hand that allows him to hold all the other accessories. It might actually be a little bit better as a pipe holding hand. So you can put that in there and it yeah, it could sit in there. And that's it for the figure and his accessories. I think it's also worth mentioning that when you first take this figure out of the box and you start articulating the hands, there will be paint rub. There used to be paint in that joint right there, but that'll come off. Not a big deal. And also be sure that you don't lose these in the rug because they are quite small. Now let's have a look at the articulation with the hands that we currently have already on him. Uh, the Gremlins, for the most part, they're all the same based on what movie they came from. So all the Gremlins from Gremlins 1 have the same articulation because it's pretty much the same body mold except for a different head sculpt here and there. As for Gremlins 2, even though they're a little bit more varied, uh, more often than not, they're going to have the exact same body. We have just a swivel at the neck, nothing else, um, nothing on the ears at all. Articulated ears would have been nice to have them be a little bit more emotive. And then as for the rest of the body, it's a little hard to see what's going on, so do be a little bit careful. But as for the arms, they 
body swivel up and down. He's a little bit unique because, of course, he has his soft goods, which might hinder it a little bit, so we're going to play it safe. The shoulders can go up and then down. There is no bicep swivel at all, I don't think, on any of the Gremlins figures. The elbows come up to just um, below 90. They, the Gremlins figures aren't known for going that far in to begin with. Then you got, as I said, in and out on all the wrists, along with the swivel. Yeah, I'm not feeling any kind of um, joint within the waist or the torso at all. For Gremlin figures, I almost never um, move the legs just because I want them to stand well because they're very top-heavy. But they, uh, I'm always terrified of kicking them out, but you get a little bit of kick out. The joint exists if you do want to um, see what it can do. It goes back in. It kicks up, definitely going off on a V kind of angle. And same going back. He's got a very good knee joint, though. Comes at about 90 right there. And then you have ankles that go pretty good up. Not much down because they get hindered by the sculpt down there with that little talon or whatever you'd like to call it. And there is um, no rocker, but you have a swivel. These guys are really just meant for standing. And then you let the arms do the rest of the work. To compare him besides some of his other Gremlins 2 friends, who I don't think ever actually met each other, interestingly enough, we have uh, the Ultimate Mohawk and the Ultimate Greta, which is another one of my favorite figures ever. And even though these guys are on a totally different scale, I think perhaps third scale, although I'm not too sure, don't quote me on that. I also brought in the very first release of Mogwai Mohawk, Ultimate Gizmo over here, not to be mistaken with the single carded release from way back when, and the re-release that just happened recently. So this is the one that comes with the Shmorgas board of accessories that we can look at one day. And we also have the re-release of Daffy. Now to compare them with some figures that are actually 7-inch seven scale, we have Robocop over here, also from NECA, along with McFarlane's Dark Flash. And one of the great mysteries for me growing up is exactly what scale are the Gremlins figures in? And I really could never figure that out, but I'm pretty sure by this point they are actually 1 6 scale. So if you want them beside figures that are actually to size with them, I brought in a pretty much standard human shape here, which is the silver screen Nosferatu from Sideshow, which is one of my favorite cinema characters ever. And that's all, folks, for our deep dive into one of my very favorite figures, NECA's Ultimate Brain, which I have actually been waiting a very long time in my life to actually get my hands on. I mean, you gotta consider, I was 12 when these figures first started dropping, and then it wasn't until basically a decade later when I was actually able to obtain them. It was kind of perfect timing, because he released... And then Greta released, and I was like, whoosh, whoosh, yep, give me everybody, give me all the gremlins. The gremlins NECA line is kind of an acquired taste, and I say that because the figures themselves, first of all, are not the most poseable, as good as they look. If you just view these guys solely as display pieces, which is kind of what I do, I pretty much never touch them unless I want to screw around the accessories or something like that. These figures are absolutely awesome. I adore the crap out of this figure. It's definitely my favorite figure within the gremlins line across the 10 years that we've had it this far, and I hope they keep doing more. This guy just exudes charisma and presence on your shelf, especially when he's paired with Greta and she has those really bright neon colors. I couldn't recommend this figure more. Um, it's so boring when YouTubers say it, but yeah, if you like what's going on here, especially since this is such a little tiny itty bitty channel, please feel free to like or leave a comment, say hello, uh, subscribe, or hit the bell, wherever the heck that does, so you can see more reviews just like this one or perhaps better if this is one of the more clunky ones. We'll see in editing. Thanks again. I hope you like this figure as much as I do and I will see you all later. So we have two pretty open <sighs> upstairs toilet. One moment please. Kind of fitting that we have a horror movie character coming from an era of film that also influenced the Gremlins 2 little buggers that we saw in the second movie. I don't know, these guys are kind of legacy horror characters in that they kind of acknowledge all the films that are going on around them, kind of like Scream in a way. They keep breaking the fourth wall, so in a sense, they have more knowledge than mo many of the characters we know and love already do. It, they're kind of a set them and forget them kind of line, as opposed to other NECA lines like, of course, you got horror, like Michael Myers, um, Freddy Krueger. I almost said Freddy Mercury. Imagine that as a horror movie character. <laughs> There's always been a small part of me that's kind of wanted to see Brain and perhaps Greta kind of being a couple. What do you guys think? Go in the comments. Do you think they would hit it off?
No, I am not the father. 